All right, what's up guys? So today let's talk about traveling with firearms. Now, traveling firearms is uh, is usually pretty easy. Uh, a lot of people lose their mind over it, and there's no need to. What what you have to do is just abide by certain regulations, and once you do, you're golden. Now, if you read on on the uh, TSA website and your airline, whatever airline you're going to take, uh, their website they usually have separate firearms policies. Not to say that they don't matter, but the important one and the people that are actually checking your bags. Uh, or actually checking inside of them, x-raying them, and then maybe possibly opening them up, which happens quite often, uh, those are going to be the TSA guys or TSA. So those guidelines are probably the more important ones to abide by. The other ones, not to say they don't matter, they do matter, but there are some points or uh, some things that I'll kind of show you guys that you can kind of not skim by, but uh, get by on because they're not checking your bag. Legally, they can't check your bag. Uh, all they're allowed to do is uh, make you sign this little firearms, you know, unloaded card and then send this and, and you put it in your own bag, you close it, you lock it. Now, if they want to see your firearm for whatever reason, because some airlines like to do that, they like to overstep their bounds. Um, there have been a couple cases where they uh, they want to see the unloaded gun and that's pretty cool. I mean, that's fine. I'll, I'll show them. Um, I don't mind doing so, but usually uh, you should ask for a supervisor or you should actually ask for them to bring a TSA agent over so they can inspect the bag because that's who actually inspects the bag. And most of the airline <laughs> um, people, no offense to them, but when they're up there at those check baggage counters, they don't really know what they're looking for because their training is obviously not geared towards this. It's geared towards providing boarding passes to the important people or proper people tagging bags and putting them on this assembly line so they can go ahead and, and uh, scurry off into the baggage claim area or the baggage area so they can load them onto planes. So it's not geared towards firearms and as much as we like to scowl them and, and annoy them with all our firearms stuff, uh, really just like anything else, they're just not well trained or equipped for doing so. So in this video, I'll go over how I pack my boxes uh, or my cases and how I pack them for traveling and also how I pack ammunition. So I get a lot of questions on these things and wanted to kind of bring them to light um, as well as I may go over what I carry on in uh on my carry-on bag so that that'll be a future video as well but for this one i'll talk about how i pack my boxes and how i pack my my other duffel bag because i do check two bags so here we go all right guys so first off let's talk about how i i pack my bag right so my duffel bag which gets checked right so it's it's a checked bag yes i pay for two bags and uh and I find that this is the most comfortable way of traveling, also the more cost-effective way. Because all of this stuff can definitely go in my box um, or in a bigger box like my Pelican case uh, or hard-sided case because that is what TSA and the airlines require. Uh, it could definitely go in there, but it would weigh over the 50 pound limit, meaning I'd have to pay $100 for most airlines. When I check two bags though, they're both one is usually the first one's usually like thirty dollars the second one's forty dollars or vice versa however the airline does it but usually i pay seventy dollars so i can uh check my box or my my carry-on box with my firearm my hard case my pelican whatever you want to call it and then my duffel bag now 
with my duffel bag, I don't pack anything really firearms related except for ammunition. So everything else is just regular clothing stuff, um, things that I'll need for my trip, depending on weather or just clothes and toiletries, stuff like that. So um, I use just a regular duffel bag, nothing fancy about it. It's, it's probably the, the oldest duffel bag I have. Uh, I've used it for years and years. And what I've found is I don't really need a different one until this one tears, breaks, something, something goes wrong with it. There's really no need to have a cool, tactical, crazy duffel bag. Also, it's kind of nice because it is uh, semi-nonchalant and nobody really recognizes it as a tactical bag or anything like that. Um, so it's, it's kind of nice to travel with. Nobody really recognizes it. I try to keep a low profile as much as possible when it comes to traveling with firearms. So this bag also is great for when I travel with a handgun. Um, when I travel with a handgun, I use a small Pelican case and I'll put a, a little pass through of what that looks like and how I pack my little small Pelican case. But when I travel with a small one handgun, like I'm not going for a firearms course, but I'm just going for like vacation or something like that. And I'm taking a firearm with me. I'll go ahead and pack it like, like that in that little case. And as you can see in the little case, like all I have is my firearm. Um, and then below it, I can either put the mags or or uh, or any other uh, necessary equipment, but I'll show you how I, I use that um, in a separate video uh, total. So going through going through how I pack this bag is pretty simple and what I put in it, right? So so starting out usually I'll 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 list what I have here and kind of put it out there for you guys, but really it's very simple. I every time I travel I bring Gore-Tex shoes. Right, so whatever shoes you decide are, are good for you. Most of the time, some mid-ride or high-ride ones are usually what I'll go for because when you get Gore-Tex shoes that are low, a lot of times water gets in there a lot easier. But as you can see, like where the dirt and mud kind of stop is because I have the mid-ride Gore-Tex size or height on these Solomons, which gives me a little bit of coverage from my pants. So when it rains, it, it drips down my pants versus drips into my boot. And then all the mud and stuff usually sits lower than that. So just something to think about when you're when you're purchasing Gore-Tex boots. Um, personally, these are the ones I go for, uh, and I have a couple others and a couple different brands and stuff. But uh, most of the time, my Solomons are are good to go. They have good tread. They usually last well enough for what I need. And then Gore-Tex wise, they they do a good job of keeping water out of my feet. Super super important when you're flying or going to a class. Uh, having some kind of Gore-Tex boot. Now, I don't like wearing my Gore-Tex boots or dirty ass boots and muddy stuff at the airport. It's a huge tell uh, that you do something outdoors and if somebody recognizes Solomon's, it's even more of a tell. Personally, I like to keep it low key, like I said. So Solomon's like these or my Gore-Tex boots go in my bag and I wear a separate kind of shoe on, on the airplane or, or when I'm traveling. So Gore-Tex boots, check, right? To go with that weather-based stuff, right, I usually take a hat because sun is going to burn the shit out of you or the rain, when it comes down, it's going to get uh, on your lenses and then start blocking what you can see. So I prefer to have a hat whenever it's it's uh, whenever I'm teaching or taking a class. That way it, it covers me for sun and rain. Um, so hat, nice and easy, nothing crazy about it. Gore-Tex jacket. This thing is a lifesaver. So whether it's windy, rainy, um, it's a little chilly, but not so chilly that I need any layers, or it could be the top layer to smaller insulation layers that I'll wear uh, to include like my, my base layer or my, my shirt or something. A Gore-Tex jacket is super important. This one's an Arteryx. Uh, I believe this is one of the Leaf uh, Arteryx ones, uh, probably the Atom or something like that, or Alpha or whatever they name their things. but. Really, it's just it's just a Gore-Tex jacket, so nothing fancy about it. Nice, uh, good, good working jacket. Uh, I would say don't skimp on stuff that you're gonna use on the outdoors. Like I've had this jacket for like three years now. It has been probably one of the best things I've ever purchased. Now, if you can find them on sale, that usually helps a lot. But uh, I will say that a Gore-Tex jacket, Gore-Tex boots, and a hat are gonna save you so much heartache on range. Uh, instead of just being soaking wet and miserable, not learning because your brain is on how you feel versus what you're learning. 
So as, a, as an instructor, I find that that's an important part of packing for me. If I'm miserable and I show that I'm miserable, most of the students are gonna start to feed off of that because it is contagious to an extent. But if I'm content, I'm happy, and I, I'm comfortable to an extent, most of the time students will see that as well and they're gonna, they're gonna feed off of that in a good way. So Gore-Tex jacket, super important for me. All right, now comes my, my simple stuff, like my clothing. I usually pack in these little packing cubes. Uh, you can get these anywhere. Uh, it, I bought this one from Amazon, so nothing fancy about it, but it's a packing cube. So I unzip it, I organize all my clothes in there folded, I zip it back up, and I can even compress it if I need more room in my duffel bag so I can compress it and make it smaller. But I like to pack in packing cubes. It keeps everything organized and it also keeps my clothes away from my dirty Gore-Tex boots, which I could also put my boots in a bag of its own uh, so that I don't dirty anything else. That's also an option, like one of the plastic grocery bags or something like that. You could always do that just to keep them separated as well, but up to you on how you wanna pack your clothes, but clothing, right? So nothing fancy about that either. Then, uh, toiletries. Uh, I've been using this little North Face bag for, I don't know, before deployments. <laughs> like before my first deployment, I bought it uh, because it's waterproof. And if I drip any of my shampoo or, or body wash or any of that stuff inside of this, at least it stays contained. It doesn't get all over the inside of my bag. So I only have to wash one thing. So I like having some kind of toiletry bag that is somewhat uh, waterproof and I can hang it so I can hang this on like the door or, or something like that to a hotel room um, yeah it's kind of an overkill I will say that uh, when I was getting when I bought it it was it was something that one of my uh, team leaders told me hey man make sure you get a good one for these reasons and it was a great great option or a great great choice by him but that's just a any kind of toiletry bag that will retain your stuff is kind of important right so then, then comes the, uh, the part that I get most questions on, and that is uh, ammunition, right? Like, John, how do you travel with so much ammo? Now, it depends on the class, because some classes require that I bring pistol and rifle. Now, if I need a lot of it, I'll just mail it there, right? So I'll ask the host or the range for their address so that I can mail it there, and they can, they can just transport it for me. So I'll buy it online and ship it there. That's one way that you can get out of the heartache of traveling with ammunition. Now, if you're like me and you buy a lot of ammo at one time and you're not willing to buy more just to send it to certain places, you can also put it in your bag. Now, some stipulations to it. It has to be in factory boxes, not loose. So it can't be in a bag or, or loose change kind of style. So it has to be in factory style boxes, the plastic ones with the that people use for reloading, those work fine too. Um, but they have to be in some kind of uh, retained box that also has them all separated like this. So if you don't have them like this, no big deal. Like I said, you can go to like Bass Pro Shop or REI or any of these, I don't know if REI actually sells any, but most of these little uh, stores that'll have like separate containers like this that people use for reloading, you can use those as well, as long as the bullets are separated to an extent. Now, that's a factory box, so I can put this in my bag with no problem. The same goes for my 556 stuff. I usually keep it in the factory box, just like this, taped in everything just like it comes, and this 500 rounds will last me for one class, like for me to teach a class. Usually I'll come back with a, a box or two, or if I need an extra box or two because I got a little spunky and shot a little bit more, I'll usually like buy it off of somebody or uh, I'll, hopefully there will be a guy that'll lend me some, if anything like that. Now, the other thing is too, and we'll talk about this with my hard case, my mags come loaded as well. So I'm, I'm traveling with you know 590 rounds or 500 or 620 rounds, depending on how many mags I'm bringing for that stuff. The same goes for all my pistol ammo. So all my handgun ammo, I try to keep them in the factory shipped box and into its factory little boxes that go in there. Um, it also keeps me kind of in check of how much ammo I have as an instructor. It's kind of handy to know, uh, as well as when I need to travel back home, I don't have to ditch this stuff, right? Like I don't have to give it to somebody or, or sell it to somebody. All I have to do is put it back in the box or put these separate boxes into my bag somewhere where they're not gonna burst open and they'll be fine and I can ship them back home like that with my checked baggage. So that's kind of one way that I, I travel with ammo. 
Um, another way will be when, when I talk about my box, and I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about with that, but this is probably my favorite way to go. It, it keeps it nice and organized. These boxes can easily go into my bag in some form or fashion, and then when this all gets zipped up, uh, I go and check this bag. Now, with checking this bag, I normally don't tell them that I have ammo in here. Why? Because one, they're not TSA, so it doesn't matter. And then two, the airline is gonna get crazy about it. They're gonna be like, oh, you can't do that. But you obviously can. I, sh I, I fly almost weekly now, and, uh, and I'm traveling with ammunition in this exact duffel bag, exactly how I'm showing you, and it has traveled through TSA free and clear. The, the, what happens when you check a bag like this, they're gonna open it, right? So TSA usually opens it up, they'll give me a tag, or a paper that looks just like this. They'll put it inside my bag and they've probably cut open this box of ammunition and put one of their pieces of tape over it. They just seal it back up just to make sure it's in factory boxes. That's all they care about. They don't care about the weight. They don't care how many rounds. They don't give a shit about any of that stuff or at least they haven't, they haven't brought it up to me in any way. So, and I've traveled with up to a thousand rounds of each in my bag. Now, does that add to the weight? obviously right it's going to be heavier but doesn't matter the airline doesn't ask you what's in the bag for the most part and if they do i just lie <laughs> and i just tell them i'm not i'm not traveling ammunition and usually they're not even talking about this bag they're talking about my other box which we're going to get into right now so guys let's get into how i travel with my pelican case now my pelican case is pretty simple it's uh this is one of the older ones. Obviously, you can tell it's seen some fucking mileage, <laughs> like a lot of mileage. And um, and this is a 1560, right? So 1560 Pelican case. It's a great case. Obviously, it's lasted me pretty long. Um, originally, I think it's meant for like camera equipment, which is fine. Uh, I bought mine with no foam on the inside, right? So I bought it with absolutely no, no covering or no protection on the inside for my equipment. And I'll, I'll explain why. Um, the other thing I did was I purchased it with an organizer that that actually screws on to the lid made by Pelican. This organizer is actually really functional and I, I, I'm really happy I bought it because it, it comes in handy for a lot of different things, right? You can see like I keep uh, extra set of, uh, you know, earplugs, some, some little uh, microfiber wipes, some little tools for like zeroing and stuff like that for different optics, some cat crap, some lube, right? And, and even a, uh, a, one of the Glock speed loaders, just in case my hands get that raw that they're not, you know, it's not functional for me. Now, something else I'll do, you know, like I'll, I'll usually leave a pocket empty so that I can actually put my, my timers in here or my locks or anything that I want. And then I'll also uh, use a Theorem cell vault for my batteries so that they're contained inside of here with a container. Obviously like Sharpies, pens, nothing fancy there, but that's something to, to think about too. If you're, if you're taking a class, make sure you bring a Sharpie. And then I also uh, use a little GPS um, uh, tracker so that I can track my uh, bag. So not only do I rely on the airline to track my bag and stuff like that or my box, but I can also use this tracker, which I have to charge before every trip and then turn on and activate with the app. And I have to pay a subscription for it every year, but it's worth it to pay a hundred bucks for a subscription for a tracker like this, a little GPS tracker that I can Velcro in uh, inside my box so that I can keep my investment of however many guns or, or pistols or rifles or whatever that I have in here safe, right? So that's kind of important in my opinion. So it, it's worth it to me because I travel so much. It depends on you, yourself, your, your budget, your occupation, all that thing, all those things for if you're gonna even go into that route. Now going further into it, like John, how do I pack everything inside here? And, uh, and oh, uh, this zipper here down, down at the bottom, I usually leave it pretty empty. And the reason for that is because I put my carry stuff in there. So my carry gun, once I unload it, I usually snap the little straps back in and that's what I put over here. Unloaded, unloaded, all right? All the guns in, in your bag or your box have to be unloaded. 
Now, something else I'll go ahead and do, and, and I'll, I'll go ahead and empty this so I can show you guys, but it's, it's a simple packing process. All I do is pack it in the best way that everything's gonna stay relatively where it's supposed to go. Now, ear pro, kind of important, right? Um, my holsters for whatever gun I'm using or whatever guns I'm using. I also bring a spare holster for some of the other guns. Like I don't have a SIG Safari Land, so I have a Black Hawk Omnivore just in case. Also, it works for a lot of different guns, so if somebody breaks something, I have a spare. Or if I break something, I have a spare. Um, I also, my belt, right, my belt setup. If you guys wanna see how my belt is set up and, and all that jazz, go on to, uh, there's a video on my YouTube channel here that uh, overlays everything on this belt and how I set it up. I also have my cleaning kit, right? So I have an Otis cleaning kit from the military. This is the same one I used to use and it is packed with all sorts of different things that I use for cleaning my guns, um, all the way down to like lubrication, cat crap, barber's brush, torn t-shirt, you know, little pulls, pulls for uh, the barrel if I need to clean stuff out of there. And I have some rods just in case somebody needs to jam out, you know, a piece of brass, like something that's stuck in there or whatever it is. Um, so cleaning kit, that's pretty simple. Everybody has their own flavor on that. So find one, make sure you bring it too. Med, right? A Dark Angel med kit, very important. In my opinion, if you're traveling and you're using guns, you should have med, uh, as well as I have med on my belt, but I have a separate one that goes for the class um, for this kind of stuff, especially when teaching. This is the smallest or the, sm I would say the, the minimum that I could use to help somebody with uh, a serious traumatic uh, injury to their extremity or even their chest in this pouch. So that's what I'm going for with that. I also have like a pouch here that I use for all my stickers and like patches, things like that. I try to keep them organized in one pouch so they don't get lost or they don't get crushed by other things. So that's just something um, that's more specific to instructors. Then I also have iPro in here, right? So some clear iPro. Uh, I, I have some Magpul clears in here. They work great. Uh, I usually use Oakley ones as well, but these Magpul hard cases, as you can see, or I hope you guys can see, it's gotten beaten up quite a bit, right? So it gets it gets jammed in here and bounced around by TSA. So you can imagine what what all goes through or what, what this little case has gone through over the years. And, uh, and I highly recommend these little cases. They are great for iPro if your iPro fits in here. Um, if you're using M frames, use the M frame cases because those are the only ones that I've found that fit them good and they're still really well protected in those. Another thing I do, um, and cones, right? So I bring cones because certain ones in my drills, I like to set up lines or I like to set up different exercises that have these kind of things. Um, so I use cones. Some people don't like them. Uh, I don't care. I have cones. Uh, then going further into it, John. What's this pouch? This is an easy pouch. So um, I usually keep my locks in here. We'll talk about that separately. But I also put mags. So my carry mag that comes out of my carry gun, as well as my pouch and carry mag, go in here and I zip them up. One, so that your airline can't see them because if they see loaded mags, they're gonna lose their mind. So TSA doesn't mind loaded mags. Airlines don't want loaded mags. So you have to hide them from the airline, but TSA won't give a crap. So it's in their guideline that it is actually a container that protects the bullet, so it doesn't matter. So that's how I keep my mags, uh, at least my carry mags. They all go in this pouch with carry ammo. When it comes to my normal mags, sorry. When it comes to my normal mags, I keep them in a little pouch like this. Right, uh, I don't remember where this pouch came from. It's some kind of uh, zip pouch or, or uh, I don't know, some kind of pouch that I can just cinch up. So it's some kind of cinch pouch that I found or, or I've had for a little bit. But this is where I keep all the other mags for other guns. So my rifle mags, my pistol mag, anything like, I, like that I'll keep in here. And once again, it doesn't matter if they're loaded or unloaded because they're in the pouch and the pouch will not only keep them from the airline baggage people's eyes because that's what matters that's who's going to give you shit about them 
but they're all together and you can always find them. They're not dingle dangling around in your, in your box. So I like to do it this way and keep them in some kind of baggie and I'll cinch it up and then they'll never see them for the most part. And if they do, or they, they want to check inside your box, they need TSA to do that. They're not allowed to, uh, you know, the airline people aren't allowed to go through your box because they don't have the authority to. You get a supervisor, you get TSA over there, and they can look through your box. Now, if they lose their mind and they're like, you have loaded mags and all this stuff, go bring up the guidelines, show that they are technically a container that they can protect, they can protect the bullet and the primers aren't exposed. And that's what they're looking for is a container that does that. Now, I haven't had that problem. So if you do have that problem, let me know. That'd be kind of cool to know. Uh, if you've had that problem, how did you have it packed? I'd like to know about that too. But this is the way I've been doing it for years now. I put it in a pouch. I put it in here. They never see them and, um, and they never give me any issues about it. So John, how do you carry your guns, right? So here's a, here's a separate problem. Guns are something that need to be unloaded in your bag or in your box here, right? They can't be dingle dangling around and unloaded. I'm sorry, and loaded. They have to be unloaded. So when I travel with firearms and here's three handguns, when I travel, like I just got back from a pistol class, this is how I traveled with them. So all my handguns were unloaded, no mag, nothing like that. And they're sitting in this pouch all together. Ooh, careful. And this pouch is, I think, from Haley Strategic. It's their, like their laptop pouch or something. You can use whatever you want. It's not, nothing crazy about it. But all these guns are sitting in here unloaded. The other thing I'll do is make sure my dots are dimmed down all the way or uh, just on an auto mode, right? Save my battery. Also, if they get bumped, I know. Um, and then I'll make sure that my white lights don't get bumped or putting them in here actually helps with not getting them jammed against something that turns them on the entire flight and burns out my shit. So something to think about there, I like to use this kind of like little pouchy style thing that has little sleeves, nothing crazy. Like I said, it's not, it's not the fanciest thing in the world. My guns still rub against each other and rattle a little bit. So it is what it is. In my opinion, it doesn't matter all that much because they're tools. They're not meant to be, you know, this, this pristine object that stays perfect forever. But if you're worried about it, put them in foam, right? Get the foam lined one and, and use the little foam slots and all that stuff. But personally, I, I could care less on that end. Now, when I pack uh, my handguns, that's how I usually do it. When I declare my firearm at the baggage counter, when I'm going to check my box, I unlock the box. I don't open it up. Right? They give me that little orange slip and I sign it. And that little orange slip goes in here. Now, if they ever ask me, oh, where's the gun? And I'll show them right here, right? I'll either unzip it a little bit so they can see it. I, I tell them that it is unloaded. That's what you're signing anyways. You're signing that you are confirming that it is unloaded and you're not breaking any laws. And then that's it, right? They never ever see those because those are under everything in here. The other thing, and once I repack this for you guys, I'll, I'll show you, is I make sure they, they one, don't see those. That That's the only gun they ever see. Like, they don't give me issues for it. I, I haven't had many issues. Some people ask if I'm a cop or something like that. I say no. I teach cops sometimes, stuff like that. So I usually keep it pretty, pretty bland and and non-conversational, right? Because those people don't care. What they're trying to do is gauge what they're putting on the airplane. And once they get an idea of it, or if you confirm that you're not doing anything wrong, they're usually pretty good about it. They're like, hey, TSA will deal with it. That's how I like to handle it. I'll let TSA handle whatever it is. Now, when it comes to rifles, clear out some of this stuff here. When it comes to rifles, and this is a 12.5, right? This is my Roscoe 12.5 upper. and when it comes to rifles, notice how it doesn't fit, right? <laughs> People ask me all the time, John, what about when you travel with rifles? I use the same box, all right? What I do is I just break it down into two pieces and I'll go ahead and, and lay the upper in and the lower in, all right? And nothing crazy about it. Like you can see, it is just laid in here. Now, actually I put it in the opposite way because of the scope, there we go. And then it leaves me a little bit of room for my lower receiver to seep under there on one way or another, right? 
And then I just pack everything else right on top of that. So pistols, kits, more kits, all right, that ma those mags for my personal stuff, my belt, my holsters, my stickers, ear pro, cones, eye pro. Nothing crazy about it, right? Like that is probably one of the easiest ways to do this. The last thing I do before I pack this up and lock it is I grab a piece of foam that I've cut out myself, nothing crazy, but if, if for some reason there is some extra space, it compresses against everything and gives me a little bit of a buffer between the things that are in here and the things that are in here. Then I close this up. All right, close it up nice and easy. If I was given one of these, I'll throw it in here, right, for, for the baggage peeps, throw it on there, close this bad boy back up, and then I lock it. Now, let's talk about the locks. Locks are pretty simple, guys. Uh, I just use master locks. One, if you know anything about lock picking, you'll know that every single lock in the world is useless, all right? It's just an illusion, <laughs> just like security as well as locks are just there for, to keep honest people honest, guys. They're not there to keep people that actually want what's inside honest. Um, I will say that every time you travel with firearms, your box should not have TSA locks on it. That's actually said in the TSA regulations, no TSA locks. If they do need them for whatever reason, right, they need to get in your locks and they need your keys, you just go, you, you either go with them because you have NFA items or you have um, firearms that you don't want, you know, not viewed by you. And sometimes they'll let you back there, sometimes they don't. You have to be the one that kind of uh, gives one, them to the, uh, the allowing, uh, or them allowing themselves to cut the locks, or you can give them the keys and they'll open it up, check it however they want, lock it back up, and they'll put a tag in there saying that somebody searched it up to you on how you want to deal with that. Now, some airlines and some airports, they'll have you walk your, your box over to uh, the TSA guys and they'll check them for you right in front of you. That way it's clean and clear before you ever make it through security. Um, in Fort Lauderdale, the Fort Lauderdale airport doesn't do that, right? They put it on the conveyor belt right behind the check baggage stuff. They go back there, they get x-rayed by TSA somewhere else. And a lot of the times TSA wants my keys. As, as messed up and as much as I don't want to, I don't want to miss my flight because I do have students that are relying on me getting there. Um, and I'm not going to get all fucking up, upset over it. I'm just going to give them my keys. I'm going to let it happen. Um, unfortunately, that's as far as you can do, right? Like government's going to do what government wants to do. And as much as the TSA guys want to um, do their job, they don't want to hassle as well. The majority of the time, I, or I've never had anything go missing so that's a good thing and uh, hopefully I never do, but sometimes you just have to give up your keys, guys. And as, as shitty as that is, they'll bring them back at some point. Um, they'll confirm that they locked it back up and you can take a card or a, a name from the guy or the supervisor, however you wanna do it, so that you know that when you get home or you get to your place that you're going to, if something is missing, you know who to contact or who to blame. And then, and then you know where it's going to and, and all that jazz and you can take it as far up the ladder as you want. But that's how I pack my box, guys. Nothing crazy, um, very simple. And as you see in this box, I have four handguns and a full uh, AR. Uh, I could fit up to a 14.5 broken, in da broken down into two pieces in here diagonally and still carry all that equipment. Um, right here as it sits is around 50 pounds. So give or take a couple pounds depending on how much shenanigans you bring with you um, in this box also I didn't show you guys AR mags but I'll slide those into that pouch like I said with those pistol mags um, and, and stuff like that so don't get too wound up about it but that's how I travel with firearms guys uh, whether it is for class or I'm traveling because of some kind of other activity that I'm doing with guns 
Um, the other box that I'll use is a Pelican uh, 1615, and I'll show you guys that one in a little pass through. Um, it does get a lot heavier, but if I'm bringing body armor and I'm bringing other, other equipment or multiple rifles, something like that, I'll have to use a bigger box and I'll have to pay for the weight. It is what it is. Uh, the other thing is I'll have to, um, if I'm taking a precision rifle and, and a precision scope, uh, out to a class, I will use a longer box, like a, a 1700 or 1720 or something like that, because I just can't fit it into one of these smaller boxes and I don't need it rattling around because it is a precision item versus being uh, rifles or pistols that can rattle around a little bit and be fine. So uh, as, as brutal as this is, uh, traveling with firearms is really easy uh, overall. Um, yes, you're scrutinized more than the, the regular passenger and when you uh, arrive, you usually have to go pick it up at the baggage counter or the oversized baggage area and they'll check your ID and stuff like that. Um, as annoying as that is, it's kind of nice as well because it's not coming out on the conveyor belt like uh, normal luggage and getting involved in other people's abilities to snag it with sticky fingers. So hope this helps guys. Um, like I said, uh, I'll talk about uh, my carry on stuff in another video. Uh, hopefully next week or something, but it'll come along. But this is how I travel with firearms, and it's very simple. Like I said, when you when you arrive at the airport, I, I usually have this all locked up. I roll it in and uh, and just tell the person at the check counter that I'm declaring a firearm, and they'll want me to open this up, right? Unlock it. They'll want me to pop it, and they're gonna want to put this tag or have me put this tag inside my box. Nothing crazy, nothing uh, too, too crazy uh, about the whole situation. So if you have any questions, let me know guys. You can put it in the comments or email me or whatever you want. Um, and if, uh, if there's something that in here you are like questioning or anything like that, like I said, I just ask and I'll, I'll try and answer as much as possible. But that was a deep dive in how John packs his box and what he packs in his box and how he travels on an airline. So, take care. Tonight my theme is all about to play. All my